Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about the ultimate machine for capturing the details, emotions, textures and subject isolation. The Suray 135mm T 2.9 anamorphic lens. Before we start this video, I want to let you know that this isn't a review. It's just a fun little video showing you how we test out new equipment and experiment with silly and weird ideas. Now, I've never really been a telephoto kind of a guy. Focal lengths above 85mm scare me, to be honest with you. It's so, like, wrong. It's not that I can't get awesome looking shots, but it just doesn't feel like me, you know? I feel a lot slower because most of the time you can't just whip your camera out of your bag and immediately start shooting like I'm used to. I mean, you can, but this is the type of a focal length where you truly start seeing the skill of a filmmaker. You have to look for a small area around you, which you will use as the background, whether it's a texture or some kind of lights, and whilst it might sound easy, trust me, it's not. What you see in the background here is the old town of Riga, and I've been here millions of times. However, with a 135mm anamorphic lens, I was getting shots I had never captured before, because I kept searching for these little spots of texture, lights, and leading lines to use as my background elements. Anyway, long story short, it's always such an amazing feeling to be in a spot where you think you've captured all angles possible, but then suddenly, all you do is change your focal length and start seeing stuff you've never noticed before. And this kept happening throughout the whole evening. We walked to a lot of old spots, but somehow managed to find new perspectives to capture these spots from. After day one, I felt pretty warmed up. In fact, I felt a little bit too warmed up. So we decided to go for a cold swim. Very good weather. I like it. Picasso. My main goal here was simple. Film my friend Eva emerging from the cold water in slow motion and make a blockbuster type of a color grade. Because why not? And guess what? The shot turned out awesome. And, uh, that's it. <laughs> that was day two. The next day, I had rented out a Christmas-themed studio. And even though we felt scammed, because in the pictures it looked like they had a lot more decorations and lights, it was still okay. My friend Aneta was modeling today, so I knew we would get awesome looking footage anyway. Today I really wanted to practice getting super close to my subject. Capturing the eyes, the lips, the emotions, all the possible details basically. This is something I already knew I had to pay more attention to, but it's very difficult to get these clean close-up shots. It might look easy, but it actually takes so much time to get used to framing these shots. You know, when to add camera movement, when to leave your scene static, do I film her from the eye level or maybe from a little bit above, does she turn her body when opening her eyes or not? So many factors that will determine what the final emotions will be portrayed from the image. And this is exactly why I love practicing shooting with these focal lengths I myself don't feel comfortable with. Day 3 was a funny one. We wanted to film something boring and lame in an interesting way. So my boys and I went to a camping spot with a nice view and tried to make an epic montage of us making instant noodles. Yep, that's it. But I gotta tell ya, even though we were only filming for 30 minutes, I think the shots we got were pretty nice. Let's be honest here, everything looks great if the background is that blurred out. I still can't believe I spent 70 bucks on a stove thingy to cook instant noodles. Best investment ever. And last but not least, my favorite studio shoot this year. I went into this thinking, I'll just get a couple of shots and make them black and white. But as we started filming, Teresa, who was the model here, was just killing it with her awesome looks and moves. I immediately got so much energy to try 
try out different ways we could light up the subject. For the first time ever, I even tried the built-in effects on the Suray lights. I never used the built-in effects on the lights, but this time I was like, hey, why not, you know, let's see what happens. We actually got some insane shots and I couldn't be happier. I think my favorite scene was the one where we tried to imitate lighting. I think it was that. For some reason, I just love this vibe so much. I, I don't know why. The split color effect was okay. And the rave club scene, it was good as well, I guess. But this one was just the vibe I was looking for. Can you imagine that we got all these shots in a span of 40 minutes? Damn. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to show you how we usually test out new gear. You know, instead of walking to a forest and filming trees, we actually put the tools through different environments to see how they will perform. And if, in the end, I myself see that the results are awesome, I will for sure keep using this tool for my passion projects and client work. Have a good one, and you know the drill. Peace out.